the power of sin and darkness. His love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless and all in wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I say, for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nation with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Yeah, this is amazing grace, this is a failing that you would take my place, that you would bear my call, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my
something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Yeah, resurrection power, it runs in my veins too. Yeah, I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Yeah, this is the praise make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Come on, church, I want to hear you. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah, if there's anything that He can't do. Come on. Just as the stone that was rolled.
So I'm sitting there just now and listening to the words of this song and I realize that because of the scripture that I'm going to take you to today and because of the story I'm going to be talking about, um, that is what God wanted to have sung at this moment. I wrote down this one section of the song Give me grace to see beyond this moment here. To believe there is nothing left to fear. And that you alone are far above it all. And then it said, no sky can contain and no doubt can refrain. 
the greatness of who you are. There are so many stories in Scripture that call to our attention the power of God and how that nothing is beyond His redeeming and saving and healing touch. And just when you think that you've come up against a case study that finally here's one, here's something that will never change. Here's a person who will never be different than what they are because their lifetime has proven that this is their plight in life. And then Jesus walks into the story and something happens that changes everything and the people are left marveling after what they have uh, observed, after what they have witnessed. And that's the kind of story we're going to look at today. If you, if you will, you can turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 20 from the English Standard Version, so it may be a little bit different wording than what you have in the version that you're carrying with you this morning. But listen to this story and allow your heart to um, be taken captive by the, the dynamics of what's happening here and let us all come into the presence and into the truth of who Jesus is in this very moment. Because the Jesus who touched the life of the person we're going to read about here in this story is the Jesus who is here this morning. And whatever is happening in our worlds, regardless of what the reality seems to be, there is an alternate reality that is held in the mind and in the hand and in the heart of God. There is nothing that is beyond his touch. And may we know that and may we trust that today. Uh, may we lift up ourselves in his presence, but also lift up those that we love and care about who are faced with hard realities as they live their lives in this moment. So Jesus is with his disciples. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had enough strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country, now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs, and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had, been, who had had the legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. I'm telling you, when God moves in a miraculous way to do unbelievable things like this deliverance from demons, it will stir up fear in people. And they were afraid because of what they were observing. They thought they would never see this man whole, and now he is sitting in his right mind having a conversation with Jesus. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs, and they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. And he was getting into the boat. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled. There are some things that we just cannot imagine as being a possibility. 
Um, I cannot imagine that I would ever be able to dunk a basketball at a 10-foot goal. I, I mean, I might have a strong desire, and maybe I've been taught you can do anything you want to do, but I cannot imagine without the help of one of those little mini trampolines or with the help of our goal that you can lower to a reasonable height, I cannot imagine that I would ever be able to dunk a basketball, and that's a frivolous thing. But I want you to think this morning about something that is just completely out of the realm of possibility. Someone who has always been like they are and you cannot imagine that they would ever be different than what they are. Or someone who has been um, faced with a, a disability or a disadvantage in life and you cannot ever imagine that they would ever be able to overcome that disability or that disadvantage that has always been a part of who they are. Think of the most impossible situation that you can imagine, and you're coming close to what this man was experiencing in his life. He had been overtaken with a legion of demons, not one demon, not a few demons, but many demons. And it was so that the people in the nearby town said, we've got to do something to contain him. And so they would bind him in chains. And it got to the point that his strength under the possession of the demons was such that no chain could even bind him. He was in such torment because of the demon possession that not only did the townspeople want to bind him, but he was disgusted with himself to the point that he would cry out and it said that he would cut himself with stones because he was in such torment. An impossible situation without a doubt. When Jesus showed up, when Jesus came on the scene, impossibilities started to fade because of the power of who Jesus is. There are some people, there are some situations that we would evaluate them as being hopeless. No one can help that person. No one can change that situation. No one can put together the broken pieces that need to be put together in that situation. Or labeled helpless, which is to say not only can no one else do anything for them, but it is helpless that they can do anything for themselves. There's nothing that man could do to deliver himself from his torment. But Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, the demons knew immediately who he was. Remember James said that we say we believe, but even the demons believe and tremble because of who Jesus is. And the demons knew that Jesus, the Son of God, had come upon the scene. And while some of the people from the town had no idea about what was about to unfold, the demons within that man knew exactly what was about to happen. They knew that Jesus had full power over them, and they pleaded with him, please don't just send us out into the abyss. Please, there's a herd of pigs. Send us into the herd of pigs. And the Scripture says that Jesus sent the demons into the pigs, and they ran down the hillside into the Sea of Galilee, and there the pigs were drowned. The townspeople were so overcome, so wrought with what happened, so, uh, so overtaken by the power of what had taken place. All they could think to do is, he needs to leave this region. We, we cannot even begin to entertain what else might happen because of his presence in our midst. Can you imagine people not wanting the saving presence, the delivering touch of Jesus represented in, in their lives? And that seems to be what's happening. They were afraid of the power that was unleashed, so afraid that they wanted to send him away from them. And know this. Jesus left because they did not want him there. The scripture says that in Jerusalem, he did not many miracles there because of their unbelief. And so this morning, if you and I would dare to send him away, we are negating our opportunity to experience the miraculous that Jesus is wanting to bring to our lives. I, I told you all that as we've gone through this season of sickness with Becky's illness. I told you all about that first Sunday when I was driving over to Richland. 
She had arrived there Friday night. It was a desperate weekend. And as I rode over in my truck, I was by myself, and I was watching um, the morning begin to come to, to the, the light of day. And I was, I was praying for her. I didn't know what to pray. And the Spirit seemed to impress upon my heart to give Becky to Jesus. Just give Becky to Jesus. And I'll be honest with you, I was scared to give Becky to Jesus. Because I knew ultimately if I really meant that I was going to give Becky to Jesus, and let's face it, we can't, really, we can't really halt the hand of God. The Bible says man makes his plans in his heart, but God orders the steps of a man. So God's going to do what God's going to do. But I felt impressed of the Spirit to just give Becky to, to Jesus in that moment. And I remember as I'm looking through tears out, out my windshield driving through the swamp, I remember crying and saying to the Lord, Lord, I hear what you're saying, but I want you to know I am afraid to give her to you because I'm afraid that if I give her to you, that this might be the time that she is to leave me and to go into the heaven that you have prepared for her. Imagine a preacher having that kind of a fear. I remember hearing someone say in recent months, and I wrote it down, it said, if you really believe in heaven, you should never be afraid of anyone going there. And so finally, in that crucible, if you will, in that, in that moment, a crisis of belief for me, in the words of experiencing God, I said, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. But I, I do. I give her to you right now. I don't know what you're afraid to give to Jesus. Uh, Becky worked in the office this week here at the church for a couple of mornings. paid some bills, posted the giving, uh, picking up the things that, that she w was doing for a couple of years up until the time she got sick. I, I don't know what you're afraid to give to Jesus this morning, but I'm going to tell you, it's the best decision you'll ever make to give yourself and to give your concerns and to give your loved ones into the hands of Jesus. I cannot imagine a town making the decision, Jesus, you've got to go. Um, it was awesome this morning as the Spirit was moving and different ones of you made your move to the altar because you felt led of the Lord to go and have that moment of prayer. That's a powerful thing. It's a, can you imagine, though, that there, and there are, can you imagine that there are churches who would go to such freelance moves in a worship service and say, now listen, you need to know that when we have church here, we have a certain order we follow. And we're glad for you to come and pray, but we want you to come and pray when we tell you to come and pray. There are churches that are so structured. God save us from that kind of thinking. God, save us from the thinking that, uh, did you see what happened to that man's herd of pigs? Because I think that's a lot of what was going on when they asked Jesus to leave their town. I think right away the owner of that herd said, did you see what happened to my herd of pigs? Do you know what might happen to your life if this guy has full reign here? Is it not amazing that there were people that all they could think of is losing 2,000 pigs rather than saving an individual who had been lost for so long because of demon possession. The best decision we'll ever make is to lay our lives and our loved ones and our concerns and our hopes and our dreams in the hands of Jesus because there is no limit whatsoever to what God can do and what God 
wants to do in our behalf. Lord, give me the grace to see beyond this moment here, to believe there is nothing left to fear, and that you alone are far above it all. The skies cannot contain, my doubts cannot refrain the glory of what you're wanting to do in our lives. The man was deranged, and now he had soundness of mind and body. Now he was the one who was telling his neighbors about what Jesus could do in their lives if they would dare to come into his presence and trust him. But here's, here's the question for all of us in the light of such a passage of Scripture. Will I trust Jesus for what I cannot explain? Will I trust Jesus with that that is outside of the realm of what I am able to even understand and even if I do understand some things am I willing to let go of what I understand in order that God might have his way in my life or in this situation at this particular season of my life trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding but the truth is we lean on our understanding over and over and over again and send Jesus out of the room There is nothing beyond His saving touch. There is nothing that has gone so far that He cannot heal. There is nothing that has gone so far that He will not forgive. And yet the devil wants us to believe that God can handle certain things, but there are just some things that it's too late, too much, too impossible. There have been times that Becky and I have had to turn our minds away from what the scan says, what the doctors say, and we're thankful for all of them. But all of them scratch their heads when they read Becky's chart and then they, walk, they see her walk into the room. The truth is, folks, we have an image for our lives. All of us do. As a matter of fact, we make plans. And we can't imagine that our plans would be interrupted, even though they've been interrupted from time to time through our lifetimes. But the truth is, only God knows for sure what our tomorrows hold. Oh, but he holds our tomorrows. There are times when you have to turn your eyes away from and your thoughts away from what you see to what you cannot see. Right? Faith. The evidence of things hoped for that are beyond what we can see, Hebrews 11, 1 says. Hebrews 11.6 says it is impossible to please God without faith. And this morning there are things that are unfolding in all of our lives that we are going to be called to believe. We're going to be called to look beyond what seems to be to what could be as God's hand reaches in to touch our lives and to touch our loved ones. There's a song that as soon as I heard it a year or so ago, it just captured my heart. I speak Jesus, the song says. And the lyrics say, I speak Jesus over you, every, every disease, every brokenness, every part of your life. I speak Jesus over you that you might move beyond the reality in which you find yourself in this particular moment. Some people hear such talk and say, ah, that just sounds like hocus pocus to me, and it would be except for the fact that there is Jesus. There are times when 
All you can do is let Him take hold of your life and take hold of your circumstances. And I've got good news for you today. You don't have to understand it all to be delivered from it all. Did you notice that when Jesus showed up to touch that man, did you notice it was not the man who was talking to Jesus? It was the demons in the man talking to Jesus. Did you notice that there was no uh, particular prayer that was offered? Uh, there was, it was not like, okay, if you pray this sanctioned prayer, if you say these words, then this is what will happen because of that. There was no anointing with oil. As much as I treasure that tradition, that biblical tradition that we're called to and we practice here, there was none of that. Simply, here was a man that had been overtaken, and in his overtaken condition, Jesus dealt with the power that overtook him, and because of his love for that man, brought him to a moment of deliverance. Now, did that man have faith? He did. After he was delivered, he came back and he said to Jesus, I want to go with you. That was an expression of faith. I, I don't want to leave your side. What you've done for me it's unbelievable. I see myself. I can't believe how I'm seeing myself. I just want to be with you. I want to go with you. And Jesus said, no, I want you to stay here, and I want you to tell all of your neighbors what the Lord has done. Because you are going to become a, a bridge of opportunity for them to find faith for themselves. What God has already done becomes a bridge for us to cross in our current moment of need. I will never get tired of talking about the miracle that God has done in Becky's life. I'll never tire of that. Do I know the number of our days? I do not know the number of our days. I may go to heaven ahead of my wife. She may go to heaven ahead of me. Here's what I know. She did not have a chance and Jesus saved her life. He used some medical professionals as, as his servants and helpers in the process, but they will tell you quickly that what happened in her healing was beyond just medical science. It's miraculous. I choose to trust in the one who has power over every enemy. I choose to trust in Jesus. And as your preacher, I choose to speak Jesus over you, to speak his name over you and over your families. Anytime we gather with a group of people, there's what we see and there is the unseen. And that can represent a host of things. It can represent the fact someone said to me years ago, and, and now that we've been living this chapter of our lives, it's never been more real to me than it is right now. Someone said, none of us know at any given moment what we are carrying around in our bodies. And that is the truth. You can be well and active and on a sick bed the next day and you didn't even see it coming. It represents another part of our being, the seen and the unseen. Um, there are unseen things happening in all of our lives at any given moment. And sometimes it has to do with sin that we have hidden away in our lives, that we are trying to keep private and trying to keep away from others. And I pray today that if there are those hidden things, things that you know God would have you to let go of in order that he may bring the fullness of his blessing to your life, that you would surrender yourself to him like that man who was rescued that day from the demons surrendered himself. Jesus, I just want to go with you. I want to be with you. I want to be about you. 
I pray that you'll be like him and not like the townspeople that said, Jesus, you got to go because there's things in our lives that we don't want to have any differently than they are. If you are living a life that you know God is not pleased with, Today is the day to come out of the shadows and to repent of that sin that you might have the fullness of His glory released in your life. Now is the time. Don't send Him away. Don't cling. I'll say it this way. Don't cling to that herd of pigs and let the glory of Jesus depart your company. Have done with those things that are keeping you from the fullness of His salvation and His healing and His glory. Will you trust Him? Whatever your dilemma, whatever your brokenness, whatever your need, will you trust Him? He can heal you. He can save you. He can change you. He can deliver you. He can give you a joy and a peace and an abundance, spiritually speaking, that you have never found in anything else. But He's the only one who can. He's the only one who can. If you turn Him away, you do it to your own demise. I speak Jesus over you. And as I speak the name of Jesus over you, my prayer is that you would say, Jesus, come and have your way with me. The demons in that man said, depart from us. But Jesus, seeing beyond the possession that was taking place, saw a man that he loved, that he found worth saving, and that he longed to have fellowship with. And what a beautiful scene. Once delivered, Jesus and that man are just sitting together, having a heart-to-heart -heart talk. How glorious. Jesus. Would you bow your heads? Give me the grace, Lord, to see beyond this moment here, to believe there is nothing left to fear, to know that there is nothing going on in my life that is beyond your touch. You're above it all. No sky can contain the glory of who you are. Lord, I pray this morning that we would allow this Bible story to be the vehicle that represents our opportunity to have a heart-to-heart -heart exchange with you in the person of your son, Jesus. Help us not to go to a story like this today and, and try to find a formula. Or try to find an answer. Try to find a gimmick. Lord, I pray that we would allow this story and others like it in, in the Scriptures to bring us to the reality that the story is meant to show us Jesus. Jesus is the answer. For all of our troubles, for all of our heartaches, for all of our brokenness, for all of our sickness, for all of our sin, Jesus is the answer. Lord, may your Holy Spirit move in our lives in such a way that we would press through the struggles and the impossibilities of life 
to reach out to take a hold of the hand that is reaching for us. And help us to know, Lord, that it's not so much that we're holding on to you, it's more that you're holding on to us. Have your way here this morning. Whatever it is that has come to our hearts that we need to surrender to your touch, Lord, we surrender it now. Be it physical, be it spiritual, financial, relational, whatever the need, Lord, we lay ourselves and all of our brokenness before you. Help us to leave here changed, alive. With the testimony in our lips, it is well with my soul. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice, tell the same old lie. Trying to feel the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom. And shaking Savior, if you got chains, He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need free. He's a prison shaking Savior. If you got chains, He's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. He's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving. Savior, if you got chains, he's a chain.